ओके सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर व्हाट वी डिस्कस वाज अ न्यू डिवाइस व्हिच वी कॉल एज ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर्स एंड आई टोल्ड यू इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिवाइस व्हिच यू नॉर्मली इज यूज्ड इन इंटीग्रेटेड सर्किट्स एंड वी कैन नॉट एस्केप दिस डिवाइस बिकॉज इट हैज यू नो लॉट ऑफ पोटेंशियल्स सो यू विल रियलाइज इट when you will go in future to take some other courses then you will come to know that how important this device is like without this you will not find any iphones or any latest uh, devices that you have like laptops ipads so every device will have this as the major component so it's a very important device so uh, in the last lecture if you recall what i was trying to show you uh, is the uh, you know simplified representation of this operational amplifier which we actually represent using this triangle symbol and here you can see we have two input terminals one is the positive terminal another one is the negative terminal and then we have a output terminal which is denoted by six pin in the ic integrated circuit ic and also we have you know other pins connected to the supply lines so here we have a plus v and then we have a minus v earlier day in earlier days like in 1900s and you know nearby 2000 we used to use uh, dual supplies where we use plus and minus v simultaneously but nowadays we are using unipolar voltage supplies where you only apply a uh, plus voltage here and the negative you ground earlier it was different story but nowadays you will find unipolar where you apply positive supply this side and this side is normally grounded so it has some advantages this bipolar one compared to the unipolar but uh, we are not going into the details of that but this is basically the convention uh, that you will find out in most of the textbooks but what they do is they actually omit these uh, you know connections here because they assume that you are already powering this device using the voltage source so normally you know for 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 simplicity they will put this triangle shape and they will do some analysis which we will be doing in our today's lecture and also in the future lectures so here what we were discussing uh, was how to represent this in a idealized form which is given like this as you can see now now you are comfortable with this uh, this um, source also it's a voltage controlled voltage source and here we have this amplification factor a which is the amplification or you can say uh the gain of the amplifier so this is basically also called as the gain of the operational amplifier so i guess now you sh should not have any confusions about why we are calling it as amplifier and why you know the input of this is infinity because we have already derived the conditions for any device to be an amplifier so if you recall my earlier lectures on this you will get to know why there is an infinity here and and why there is a short here so so that comes because you are actually operating this as an amplifier so these are the properties of the amplifier and it's not a property of this particularly specific device but it's a general property of a device to be an amplifier so if you want a device to be an amplifier its input has to be of infinite resistance and output has to be of short so any confusions here regarding this uh, which we discussed in our last class okay so so this is basically a idealized situation where you are uh, uh, representing this by this circuit element because this is very basic circuit element which we have already discussed okay so today we will go a little further so let me uh, copy this again so that uh, i will try to explain something more on this here just a second so today sir, yes sir uh, this is icvs or vcis this is voltage controlled voltage source voltage controlled voltage yes uh, uh, yes sir yes i got it sir because you have this controlling voltage here right so it's a difference between the voltage that you are applying in between node 3 and node 2 mind you uh, this 3 and 2 corresponds to the ic pins and it's not uh, i am keeping it because you might wonder that why one is not there so 
these numberings i am giving as far as the pin numbers are concerned okay and uh, and this is not grounded please note because uh, it is somewhere inside the circuit you are applying the voltages at 3 and 2 and there is no ground here ground is only with respect to the this particular thing where we have the output port sir yes sir in previous slide vs is equal to v in right vs equal to v where in uh, just a minute uh, where it is where are you telling this previous slide previous slide no, upper side upper early side here in this question you are asking yes vs will be no. v in because as you can see now, it's an open circuit here. So current is zero, right? There is no current here, right? So there will be no drop across the resistance. So Vs will be equal to V in. Okay? Sir, one doubt was there, sir. Yes. Sir, gain of amplifier is written as V out upon Vs. V out upon, uh, yes, V out upon Vs will be the total gain of the amplifier. Sir, why not, uh, why that V out by Vs only, that first you wrote V in, then no, you see, they, see, Vs. the thing is, so I'll tell you. Vs is equal to V, is Vs equal to V in. Yeah, Vs is equal to V in is another thing, but uh, the important part is, you know, uh, please note that this is the, this is basically a black box. It's like you are purchasing a microphone. So it's a black box. So it's a microphone. So when you purchase a microphone from your, you know, from Amazon or any, any, any shop, what you are getting is this particular black box. So we are representing that black box or, a, you know, just let me draw that microphone here. So not good at drawing, but this microphone uh, is a, is a physical device that you have in hand. But what you are doing is for analysis purpose, you want to represent this in circuit, you know, so you are representing this actual device, whatever is inside this microphone, you are representing in, in this black box. And what you are saying is the characteristics of this microphone is such that its input, input resistance will be infinite and its output resistance will be of short. So somewhere, you know, you are actually speaking inside this microphone. So the voltage source, the, the, your speech, whatever you will speak is actually a sinusoidal signal or any complex speech signal it will actually be you know generated at this source that's why we are calling it as v out by vs okay <clears throat> okay so we can say like uh, we are giving an input of vs and we are getting an output of v out so yeah yeah so some way, this is basically the load the speaker that you are applying you know loudspeaker is there right so v out is here you know so, so that's why whatever you are speaking from the extreme left to the output you are having. So you divide V out by Vs. Okay, so one thing to note here is, uh, as I told you that we have this factor of A, which is capital A, which is inherently you can assume that it's a gain of the amplifier. So you call it as A0, let us say. So this typical value of A0 in practical circuits, when you will draw them, like, you know, when you will draw them, draw them in the sense, uh, like this, uh, let me show you this device. Yeah, this one. So if you, if you draw this circuit, actually, not the triangle, which I have drawn, and when you, and when you calculate the V out by V in here for this particular circuit, so the actual value of this A naught normally is very big. So sometimes it is 100. And uh, and in uh, and it ranges between 100 to 10 to the power 6. So normally it's in this range. So it's a very high gain value. So A0 is of very high value. So this has to be kept in mind that the value of A0 is very high. And this is for practical values. But if I consider ideal situation, so you know that uh, you know things are not ideal at all. They are practical. But if I consider uh, AZ, uh, if I consider this operational amplifier as an ideal amplifier, then what can you say about the gain of that amplifier? What will that be uh, if, if it's an ideal situation? Can anyone tell? 10 raised to 5 to 10 raised to 6. 
no no 10 to the power 6 or 100 is actually the practical values we normally can achieve that infinity yes good so ideally operational amplifiers if you consider ideal situation which is very difficult to achieve and you know things are not ideal in real life also so uh, ideally a zero value will be infinity that is if if i say in exam that uh, op amp is ideal then you have to assume that a zero is infinite and it's not 100 or 10 to the power 6 if we say that op amp is not ideal then we will give you the values like what are the values of that op amp whether it's 100 or 10 to the power 6 okay so this has to be so why infinity only see whenever we say something as ideal ideal means you know it is uh, there is no artifact in this there is no problem at all we are not seeing any any uh, any problems in that so whatever whatever things you are actually keeping in that like for example the bjts or the transistors that you are keeping are assumed to be uh, having no flaws so it's like it's a completely very very good situation so in very good situation what do you want a0 to be like you know here you have between 100 to 10 to the power 6 but you want this a0 to be as high as possible the moment you want a0 to be as high as possible the best value that you can get is infinity i will tell you why you want this a0 as high as possible why not as low as possible this will be explained in the coming slide which i will discuss now okay so uh, so now uh, as you can see uh, this v out which is the uh, output of the operational amplifier which we have written earlier also this v out is written as a0 v1 minus v2 so this also can be written as a0 vd where vd is what vd is difference of the voltage that you apply between the two terminals and the name of these two uh, uh, voltages which are applied at these terminals is v1 and v2 so now <coughs> so you know that a0 is very high uh, you assume that like you know it's 100 or 10 to the power c whatever the value be so if i say that if v1 is slightly greater than v2 if v1 is greater than v2 what can you say about the value of v out what will that be if v1 is slightly greater than v2 one uh why one sir because v1 no see this is, is nearly zero let us say we have is 10 to the so power so tending six. to zero why tending to zero i am sir i not sir uh, some finite value actually uh, yeah, like so, near so, so let us say we are saying that v1 is not uh, you know v1 is a big than v2 not like i am saying uh, like you know for example if v2 is 10 to the power 10.2 let us say i am saying v1 as you know 20 let us say so like this i am saying i am not saying that v1 is uh, 10.5 not like that i am saying there is a difference between the two but v1 is greater than v2 so in that case you are actually multiplying a0 which is 10 to the power 6 with this factor right which is v1 greater than v2 so So, what will be the value of V out? V out will be very high or not? Yes, sir. High value. Yes, sir. It's a very high value, right? So, V out will be very high. So, I am representing it by an upward arrow. And why it is very high or very high? Because your A is large. That is why it is having a very high value. If A is not large, then you you can say yeah, it will be positive, but it it will not be that large. and in the other case when v1 is less than v2 what you can say about v out it will be very small yes it will be very small and the reason is same that is a is large so uh, this is basically uh, like you know vd is less than 0 is this this is basically equivalent to saying your vd is less than 0 and this is equivalent to saying as your vd is greater than 0 ओके तो सर मतलब ये सिर्फ जो वी आउटकम होगा वो नेगेटिव होगा बट सर उसकी वैल्यू तो बड़ी हो सकती है ना नेगेटिव इन द सेंस ये कि माइनस में इट विल गो राइट इट विल कम क्लोज टू जीरो कम क्लोज टू जीरो क्योंकि सप्लाई रेंज जो है इट इज बिटवीन जीरो टू वी डी डी एज आई टोल्ड यू राइट यू हैव अ सप्लाई रेंज बिटवीन जीरो टू वी डी डी सो इफ आई एम सेंग इट इज वेरी स्मॉल देन इट विल बी क्लोज टू जीरो यू अंडरस्टैंड and okay, if it sir. is very big then it is close to vdd see in electronic circuits 
वॉट हैपन्स इज यू कैन नॉट गो बियॉन्ड दी वोल्टेज लाइन्स लाइक यू नो अगर आपके पास इफ यू हैव वी डी डी एंड जीरो यू कैन नॉट गो बियॉन्ड वी डी डी देर आर सम सर्किट्स विच आई एम नॉट डिस्कसिंग हेयर वेयर यू कैन गेट सम वोल्टेज इज बियॉन्ड दैट बट आई एम नॉट गोइंग इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ दैट सर्किट्स हेयर बट इन जनरल वॉट हैपन्स इज यू कैन नॉट गो बियॉन्ड जीरो एंड वी डी डी ओके ओके सर सो इफ इट इज वेरी स्मॉल मीन्स यू आर टचिंग जीरो ओके सो नाउ वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू टूडे इज अनदर कंसेप्ट विच इज कॉल्ड एज नेगेटिव फीडबैक सो वी आर नॉट गोइंग इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस फीडबैक थ्योरी बट स्लाइटली आई विल गिव यू अ क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन सो दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक सो नेगेटिव फीडबैक इज नथिंग बट इट्स अ सॉर्ट ऑफ फीडबैक एक्चुअली दैट यू आर गिविंग टू अ सिस्टम सो फीडबैक्स आर यू नो are required to keep the system on track so similarly uh, in analog design or in electronic circuits we have this concept of negative feedback and what it tries to do is it tries to provide a feedback to the system so that it should not go off the track so for example let us say you have a car so in car if there is uh, it's a it's a car with no speedometer and you are only given the you know accelerator uh, in that car and speedometer is not given and uh, and the person is telling you to drive that car so so if the speedometer or accelerator uh, speedometer is not given you will keep on accelerating that car to the to any value whatever wish you want like you know there is there will be a capacity that beyond that that car will not move that is for sure but for uh, you know for the for traveling within the city uh, you are traveling within the, with, without a speedometer and you are keep on accelerating that car will it be true or not like you know if there is no excel uh, speedometer to given to you then you will definitely push that accelerometer at your own wish and you will speed up the car will it be uh, is it uh, will it be right or not for uh, for everyone it will be like that right you will do yes, that yes sir see so the thing is you know this type of situation where there is no feedback given to you at uh, you know at any stage like you know Uh, whether your car is uh, at what speed so you are you key you will keep on accelerating that by pedaling it but now if i give you a speedometer along with that then what will happen and if i tell you don't do not go beyond 60 do not go beyond 60 km per hour then what you will do you will continuously observe the speedometer and then you will try to maintain the speed to 60 km if it goes below 60 a bit then you will accelerate to get back to 60 and if you are ahead of 60 km speed then you will deaccelerate to get back to 60 so that means uh, somewhere down the line what happens is you are actually observing this speedometer through your eyes and you are getting a feedback from this speedometer that you know you have to be on 60 km scale so that type of feedback which is given by the system to the driver is actually a negative feedback in real life so so it's a it's a general concept where you try to accurate you try to make the system in control by providing it a feedback so that things should not go ups and down so normally in general uh, in in most of the electronic components that you will observe we have this feedback without feedbacks uh, you know these circuits will not work at all and specifically negative feedback is the basis for you know amplifiers so this uh, without these negative feedback you cannot implement operational amplifiers so any any questions about this feedback thing which i was telling here uh i would request all of you to mute your mics because somewhere uh, uh, some noise is coming yes any any questions related to this feedback concept okay so if there is no question yes sir so basically negative feedback is showing a particular value to control uh, the output yes so it's 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 basically giving you a value where you have to stick down to so you have to change your input accordingly so that you can get back to that same value which is given to you okay so that is basically acting as a feedback so it's a output that you want and what you are trying to do is you are actually taking this output and through your eyes and then uh, you know through your human uh, uh, 
through your uh, actions basically you are actually controlling the pedal of this accelerometer so it's a practical example in in uh, in your uh, real life uh, in your uh, in your circuits i will show you how to do that just now but uh, what you are doing is you are actually maintaining your system at 60 kilometers if if that is not there the feedback is not there then you will keep on wandering around somewhere like you know maybe you will go to zero or maybe you can go to 100 or 120 so it will keep on wandering but it will not be maintained at 60 kilometers so that is only possible if you are uh, you know observing the accelerometer and uh, doing this job okay 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 so now what we will do is we will try to design a simple amplifier using this negative feedback so we will design a simple amplifier using negative feedback so will you all agree that if i want to design an amplifier my output should be at least k times the input then 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 only it will be an amplifier right yes sir because yes, you so so i think there is no doubt here so once you have a single you know sinusoidal like this and if if you are getting something like this as an output then you all will agree that if i divide this signal by this you will get this factor k so that's what i am saying here so for an amplification our output is k times the input okay so now what we will do is if we want to design this uh, design this circuit where output is k times vi so let us see how we will do that using the concept of negative feedback which we have just studied see feedback theory is very big i am not going into the details of that i am just giving you a very quick uh, uh, summary of what feedback is all about so that we can use that information in designing very small circuits which i am doing now so we can re replace vi as v0 by k everybody will agree with this it's yes, very sir. simple right we yes, are just sir. shifting this okay so now what we will do is we will design a system in such a way that we will sense this voltage v naught by k so it's like you are sensing a 60 kilometer dial which i was telling you kilometers per hour right we were sensing this 60 kilometers per hour and then we were adjusting our you know uh, speed accordingly so here what we are doing we are actually sensing v naught by k and we are we and we want to stick to this v naught by k and we will see how we can adjust it so so we are actually sensing this v naught by k and what we will do now is we can see that if our input vi is greater than v naught by k if our input vi is greater than v naught by k what we'll do what we will do is we will actually we want v0 to be drive up we want our v0 to move up because if vi is greater than v naught by k we want v0 to move up or not yes sir to okay. get equal to <laughs> yes to go equal yeah. to kvi so because of that we want v0 to go up and in the second situation if vi is less than v0 by k then we want our v0 to go down or not because then we want uh, uh, this in order to hold this inequality inequal which is over here because right now it's greater than kvi and we want equal to kvi so we want our v0 to go down okay so that it becomes equal to kvi in the earlier case it was greater so we wanted to make v0 go up so that it becomes equal to kvi okay sir yes sir i didn't understood that uh, how you related both negative feedback and amplifier like uh, like for example you gave that example of uh, speedometer mm -hmm. and uh, now you are uh, comparing it with amplifier so i'm confused that uh, like how you related both of them yeah so this is a good question so we will i am explaining you the diagram first and then we will see the thing is this example which i was telling you this 60 km hour thing you know it's a practical example incorporating a negative feedback where you should understand the fundamental of negative feedback what that is it is you have a 60 km target 60 km per hour speed target and you want to stick to that and the process of uh, sticking to that is through a manual intervention so you are observing through your eyes this 60 km hours speed and then your physical reflex actions in your body will actually observe that speedometer and will adjust the speeds up and down so that 
you maintain the 60 km per hour speed. Here in the same way, you have V0 by K, you know, you are sensing this voltage V0 by K and what you are doing is you are actually, you want to stick to this value of, uh, you know, this gain, V0 is K times VI. So, what we are doing yes, is... Yes, understood, understood. Understood? Okay. So, yes, we sir. are going up and down based on that. Okay. So, sir, mm -hmm. the V0 is the changes that we are making, right? We are supposed to make according to the... Uh, v0. V0, uh, yes, it's a changes that we are supposed to make and that will inherently be made uh, by adjusting these VIs. I will show you the circuit, then you will realize what I'm trying to say here, okay? So, sir, if we are adjusting VI, then why did we write that we have to increase V0? It's because V0, we will be sampling out, you know, we will be actually uh, using this output VO and we will, I will show you the circuit and then I will say, tell you why V0 we are increasing here, okay? This actually automatically gets increased. I, I will show you the circuit first. Okay. okay. And Let so what you have written, uh, like, besides V0 YK in sensing, is that the what you have written? Or? Where? Uh... Just ah, yeah, 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 like, yeah, sensing, yeah. Like V0 is the speed that 60 sir gave and VI uh, is the input that we are giving and KVI we are doing to make that speed to 60. Yes, so oh. whenever we have this inequality, we try to adjust it so that we go back to equal equality here, okay? Thank you, thank you both of you. So here... Uh, sir, sir. Yes. Sir, in negative feedback, I have one doubt, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, to get desired output, the changes are made in input. There it is called negative feedback or just feedback. No, see, the thing is negative feedback means you are using the information at the output and sampling that information back to the input so that the system can correct it and give you the desired output which you want. You understand? So, for example, you saw 60 kilometers per hour speedometer thing. You sampled that information through your eyes and through your reflex action, you accelerated or deaccelerated your speedometer to get back to the 60 kilometer dial. So, so what you are doing is you are actually sampling the output voltage. You are getting information from the output, sampling it. Sampling means you are taking portion of that. Uh, so, right now here uh, in physical form, it is like, you know, you are observing through the eyes and you are sampling that information through your eyes and it's going to your reflex section and then uh, it's updating your, then you are accelerating or deaccelerating. So, it's a physical example. But here, if you want to do it practically uh, for case of amplification. So right now you forget this uh, example which I have given you for this speedometer thing. Do not mix that example with this because that example is more of a control example and this is basically the uh, electronics design example. So do not confuse with that but only take the concept from there what, what I was telling you about the feedback. So here if you have this operational amplifier which is represented like this as you already know. So what we will do is if I want to, so this is your V0. So if I want to get V0 by K, can anyone tell me how we can do that? Uh, if we want V0 by K, so if I want a voltage which is divided by a value of K, uh, can anyone tell me how we can do that? Anyone? So can you please repeat your question? So let us say we have a voltage V0, okay? I want V0 divided by K. So I want a division of that voltage. So can you tell me how you can do that using the components which we have studied? For voltage control voltage source. No, no, from the components, like from the basic components you have studied, right? You have studied. Sir, we can add resistors in parallel. Register in parallel or series? Series, sir. Series. Series, sir. Series, series. Yes. value V0 by K. Right. So, sir, so we what can we add is... resistors uh, to decrease V to V0 by K. Sorry? Can you come again? Sir, we can add K resistors to decrease V0 to V0 by K like that. Yes, yes. Right. So, that's what I am doing. Uh, so, basically, uh, you, you will add resistances in series. And then, if I say we have this resistance as R, and if I say we have this resistance as K minus 1 times R, so, will you all agree that the voltage that you will get here will be V0 by K? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. 
so now if you all agree with that and you know the property of this operational amplifier which is v0 equal to a times vd okay which is nothing but a times v plus minus v minus okay so we already know this so what we will do is we will apply vi here and we will take this this side okay so this once we do that then what you will get is the amplifier which is v0 equal to a times the voltage difference across this so let me show you how we will do that just a minute so we have this right here plus minus so you know that we have already studied that v0 is a times vd right and we also studied that vd is nothing but v plus minus v minus and we we saw that you know if i i told you right this thing here uh, like when v1 is greater than v2 then v out will go up and when v1 is less than v2 v out will go down so we are actually using this information here like you know when vi is greater than v naught by k then v0 will go up or not so here you see v0 is a vi divide minus v0 by k can you please mute your mic whosoever is this person so here will you all agree that it's vi minus v0 by k yes sir yes sir yes sir yes. Right. so uh, if that is the case this is k minus 1 r this is r this is basically v0 by k and what you were saying you were say, uh, what we studied was if vi is greater than v0 by k v0 will be increased or not if vi yes, is greater sir. than v0 so we wanted this thing right that is we wanted vi to be greater than v0 by k we wanted our v0 to increase and using this operational amplifier we are getting that functionality or not so we are when we increase vi greater than v0 by k our v0 is increasing and if i were if our, if our value of vi is less than v0 by k our v0 will decrease and this is what we wanted here so both these functionalities are actually incorporated or can be uh, satisfied if i use operational amplifier which is given like this and we have studied its equation like this okay understood yes sir so this is basically your v out so now if that is the case now what we can do is we can solve this circuit and see what gain you are getting here and we want to see what gain we are getting here so what we will do is we already know this thing right so we can take v0 onto the left side so what it will be giving you value as it will be a0 by k plus a by k equal to a0 a vi VI, right so your vo by vi is a0 sorry yeah it will be a0 over 1 plus a0 by k so this also can be written as k over 1 plus k over a0 you can check that both of them are equal any any questions here related to this uh, sir. Yes. I did not get how we got uh, V naught by K at that point. See, that this is basically, uh, yeah, okay. So, see, the important thing is, you know, this is a voltage divider, right? So, if we have a voltage, yeah. two, two resistances, R1 and R2, and it is grounded and this is actually V1, then what will be this voltage? This voltage will be V R2 over R1 plus R2. Okay. Okay. Will it be or not? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So same thing is applied here. So you have two resistances, and then you are calculating the voltage here. But can anyone tell me, like you know, what assumptions on why we are actually 
able to do this you know why we how how we can you know translate this concept here because you know this is not same as this we have this line also you know we have this branch also going out so can you tell me how we can you know use this idea of voltage division in the series assistances to be applied here even though we can see there is a difference a branch is coming out and if if a branch like this comes out from here then this will not hold true zero actually right good so because operational amplifiers if you uh, uh, the current is zero the current which is going into it is zero and why it is zero because you can see so here i told you the input of the resistance yes yes infinite because of this infinite resistance current is zero inside so that's why current is zero here okay so if current is zero then you can apply this concept of voltage division otherwise you cannot do that as you can as you know if current glow goes out from here let us say i1 then you cannot use this vr2 over r1 plus r2 so we are actually using it because there is no current going here so this is actually the property of the operational amplifier and note that property it's very important and the property is that the current flowing into the operational amplifier has zero value so that is first property that you have that you are studying now for the operational amplifiers i will list down the other properties as well do not worry about it but keep this in mind when i'll say current is zero you should immediately realize that it's coming because of the uh, uh, because of the amplification stuff because we we, we want sir, uh, yes sir can't we use capacitors where you want to use capacitors so like in parallel uh, okay here you are you want to say yes yes sir. we can do that also and inductors also yes can be done okay sir so here uh, we are using resistances okay so now as you can see we have vo over vi is k over 1 plus k over a0 okay and this is the real op amp with having a value a0 okay so, but now what you wanted was v0 as kvi yahi tha na we, our target was this but we are getting this okay so now how can we make this equal to this the second one uh, this one equal to this can anyone tell me what assumptions you have to make yes, a0 is equal to zero is larger than k right so it's basically if your k by a0 is uh, greater than 1 then it's possible or other way around sorry sir it should be very less yeah, than 1 yeah, right less than very less than it should yes. tend to zero right so if that is the case what it shows is that your a0 is very very larger than k right so that means you want as high gain as possible which we were trying to discuss earlier we were saying right uh, our operational amplifier should be of very high gain so let us say if your a is a0 is 10 to the power 6 and you keep it this is in denominator you will get approximately this value as k and then what you are getting as an amplifier you will get vo is equal to kvi this is what you wanted you wanted your input to be scaled by a factor of k so you are getting v0 okay so here from here you can see if your amplifier operational amplifier a0 is very high then it approximates equal to k so that is you are actually amplifying the the voltage so this is basically a important concept where your a0 has to be high operational amplifier a0 has to be high so from here uh this is only valid when your a0 is high if your a0 is 10 or maybe you know 11 and then maybe you know 5 or 6 then it's not possible then your voltage will not be k times your input voltage it will be something different sir so this is an ideal case or uh, real no, no. case uh, in real case what happens is your a0 is of of value 10 to the power 6 so obviously it will hit the ideal case only okay okay sir because ideally 10 to the power 6 is also very high and 
normally if you say in ideal op amp if i say a0 is infinity then it's very easy to approximate it to exactly equal to k but when your a0 is having a value of let us say 100 or 1000 then you say vo by vi is approximately equal to k so this is equal this is approximate so this equal only holds in ideal situation but approximate holds when you have a real op amp and this is your ideal op amp <clears throat> uh, so sorry to interrupt but yeah. could you explain again why uh, the current flowing in the branch is zero uh, did you attend my earlier lecture yes sir okay but uh, see here you see uh, we, we at that time we were discussing this right uh, this amplifier did you understood this thing like when i was yes sir so if if so will you agree that this is open circuit when it is an open circuit will current go here no sir it will not go right so what happens is you know this box uh, the blue box the this this box which i have drawn here is the same box which i am drawing here let me draw it just to make you understand this so this is the same box okay so in this box you can see uh, we have inputs going from here right so here you will have a open circuit like this and here you will have a voltage controlled voltage source and this will be short here okay so this is vd and this is a0 vd okay understood so this yes, current sir. will be coming because of this so this is connected so it's it's zero that's why Okay. okay sir yes thank you yes. sir i got this calculation part but uh, i just i just could not understand that why are we trying to make vi uh, vo equals to kvi we wanted to make this vo equal to kvi because if that is not there how will you speak through your microphone uh, i want to it, amplify our sound so we need to increase it yes because you want to do that right whenever you are addressing a public or maybe a debate or all these politicians if, if there are no amplifiers then who will listen to them right so amplification is very important and uh, another example i will tell you normally what happens is you know uh, when your uh, cell phones like your mobile phones whenever they receive the signal normally uh, things are not ideal as i as i was telling you earlier so whenever you know your cell phone will receive signal let me draw that so you will understand the practical part of it so you have a you know cell phone like this it has a internal antenna and here you have a bigger antenna you know where you can on ground so you must have seen uh, antennas like this right so what happens is these these are called as base stations these are called as base stations so what happens is it will transmit some signal okay this signal will you know come to your mobile but uh, the uh, the important part is you know uh, this will be actually corrupted by noise so your signal which is a very small signal which is coming from this base station is also corrupted by noise so your signal will look like this it will not be you know it will not be like this so what happens is we first of all do some filtering techniques like we will filter this signal to become like this and then we amplify these signals so that we can process them within our you know mobile towers oh sorry in in our mobile phones so this amplification is very important in case of electronic circuits okay and removing this noise is also done through other advanced techniques which i am not discussing here but you can remove these noise also so that it becomes clean and then once it's clean you amplify it so that we can use them in our uh, processing uh, within this mobile phone so that you can hear properly what the other person is speaking from thousand miles you know away from you okay but sir uh, why does first we increasing the v, uh, vi to a times vi then k times vi like see k is uh, a general value so k is uh, uh, see here uh, i will explain you why specifically k k can be anything you know k can be 2 k can be 3 k can be 10 so there is no specific okay, reason. Okay, means like a speaker when we increase yes. in volume, like we can uh, exist value of k. Yes. 
so it's it's a it's a it's a value which which can be either 2 3 10 100 200 300 whatever okay okay so now as i was discussing about the ideal op amps so now um, so the thing is you know as you know that vo by vi is k over 1 plus k by a and will all of you will agree that if a is a infinity value which is ideal op amp if a is a infinity value which we are taking for ideal op amp vo is exactly equal to kvi so if vo is exactly equal to kvi that it means this is let us say k minus 1 times r this is r here this is vo this is vi so so this is basically vo by k which you all agreed and then we said that if a op amp is ideal which is having a infinite value then vi is equal to vo by k so that means if vi is equal to v not by k that means this is also equal to vi all of you will agree ye hoga yes, will it be uh -huh. or not right so if this point is vi and if this point is also vi what can sir, you say maybe you should be uh, sorry sir maybe in, uh, you are writing something no no i was not writing but what i was saying is humne yahan par we achieved vo equal to kvi from here we manipulated it and we got vi That's as vo by k so this vo by k is this point so that is equal to vi or not okay yes yes right so if this is vi this point is vi this point is vi so what can you say from the earlier concepts which we have studied like if the two points are having same potential what can you say about sure. the connection between the two short short, short, short circuit sure. right good so, but there are there is no short circuit here will you all agree or not there is no short yes, circuit sir. between the two yes. but yes, but, but what you are getting is a feeling of a short circuit it's not a short circuit but you are getting a feeling of a short circuit because of negative feedback because of negative feedback you are getting a feeling of a short circuit but it's not a short circuit at all that's why we call it as virtual short sir current is zero then also like uh, we are imagining it as a short circuit no no see current is zero then we say it as an open circuit here you see current is zero right within this current is zero here right and here also current is yes. zero so what we are saying is inside inside this there is an open circuit that is true because current is zero but again one problem came and the problem is because of negative feedback what we saw is that this voltage vi is also equal to the vi here so it's a it's a problematic situation because we have open circuit also because of this i equal to 0 concept and now we have this point equal to this point also from the short circuit concept so short circuits are not actually available here there is no practical wire which is connecting the two there is no practical wire okay so that's why we call it as virtual short practically in practically there is no short that's why we say virtual virtual means we are not observing it but we are getting a same voltage at two different nodes which is vi here and vi here okay any questions so so this means we have very important conclusions that we are trying to draw now and the important conclusions that we are trying to draw now is that v plus is equal to v minus will you all agree that is the voltage which you are applying at plus will be equal to v minus because of virtual short and this is happening because you have a negative feedback will you all agree on this that is v yes, plus sir. is equal to v minus so this is the first point that you have to keep in mind when you are solving for operational amplifier circuits we will discuss all these concepts and solve some of the uh, questions also on operational amplifier do not worry about it but 
Keep this in mind when I will be solving these circuits. I will assume that V plus is equal to V minus and the reason for that is it's a virtual short. That's Sir, right. yes. uh, our output should be uh, VI, right? V not by K. Output should be KVI, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. KVI. Okay. So, what's the problem uh, as you are getting uh, what we are inputting and we are getting the output? Then, what's the problem? I didn't get you what you are saying. Sir, like uh, we wanted the output KVI. So, yes. we are getting that KVI. So, what is the problem? Like, uh, no, no, there is, is the no problem? problem. I am. I'm explaining you some further insights in this operational amplifier theory. Like uh, we have ideal op amps or you know some properties of the op amp. So I'm trying to explain you the properties of the op amp which are required to understand the concept and solve the circuits which we will be doing in the coming sessions. Okay. So I'm telling you the properties that which you can use to solve the circuits. Okay. So the first property that we are trying to solve is uh, that we are trying to use is like if you, if it is given ideal op amp then a is infinity that is the first point the second is you know the v plus will be equal to v minus that is the voltage that you are applying at plus terminal will be the same as the voltage applying at the minus terminal so it's a sort of a virtual short okay it's a virtual short because there is no short that's why we call it as a virtual short and it's coming because of the negative feedback concept the second thing which you already know is the current that is flowing in the plus terminal is the value having equal to zero and the current and uh, in entering into the negative terminal is also equal to zero this i have explained also so this is the first uh, point that you have to keep in mind this is the second point that you have to keep in mind and the third point that you have to keep in mind it is that do not apply do not apply KCL at output node. This is the third point that you want to that you have to keep in mind. That is, you should not apply KCL at this node. Why you should not apply KCL at this node? Because the current which is coming from here is not known to us. The current which is actually coming out of the op amp or going into the op amp is not known to us. That's why we try to avoid writing KCL at this node. And the reason for that is because this current is actually the summation of the currents which are entering in minus terminal, plus terminal, the supply lines and from the minus supply lines. So all these currents will add up to give you this value. So that's why until unless it is, until unless it is told to you that you have to calculate this current, do not apply KCL at this node. Okay. So these are the important points that you have to keep in mind in order to solve the questions that we will discuss uh, in in few minutes from now any any questions here related to what i have discussed uh, if you have any doubts you can ask me uh, everything is okay like are you able to follow up what i am trying to explain here uh, so why do we not apply uh, kcl at the output node can you come again about that Actually, what happens is, you know, this current here, we do not know this value. That's why you normally what happens is, you know, whenever you apply a KCL at a particular node, you always know that there is a potential difference between the two points and then you take the division by R. So like, let us say you have V1 here, V2 here, then you have V3 this side, then you have V4 this side. So you can easily apply, you know, KCL this side by writing uh, V1 minus V2 divided by R plus v2 minus v3 divided by you know r plus right but here yep. you have this potential available let us say v0 but you do not know the second potential here because it's inside the chip okay, okay. so yes. so this current you do not know okay so that's why uh, we do not we try to avoid it we can do it provided you can calculate this current which is basically summation of the currents flowing from this voltage v plus from V minus and uh, you know small currents which are flowing from here okay ideally I am writing it as zero mind you I am writing it as zero in a ideal situation in non ideal situation its value will be 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 2 or 10 to the power minus 4 the currents which are going into this devices okay so ideally there is no short there is no open also it's a very high value of 
10 mega ohms that is 10 to the power 6 or 10 to the power 9 so i hope you understand what i am trying to say here so things sure. are not ideal it's real so i am trying to give you the real values also along with the ideal values yes sir is there any change if we apply v node by k at a non inverting terminal pin okay that one okay the good question very good question so in this situation when you when you do a non inverting terminal let us do that also <coughs> okay so here you have minus then you have plus okay so here you keep this this is what you are saying right yes sir so if you do that and if you do the analysis what you will get as the answer is v naught by v i am writing out straight maybe you can you know calculate yourself it's very easy because here v0 is nothing but let us say it's a0 v plus minus yeah. v minus so you can substitute the values and what you will get as the answer is k over 1 minus or plus it will be like this minus k over a naught right it will be like this okay so now it's a very uh, good question that he has asked so what he has done is he has flipped the potential terminals here so what he is saying there is what's the point like you know if i put it in plus and keep it as minus this side what's the problem we are still getting the same answer right because uh, what we are saying is you know a0 is infinite okay or maybe a very large value so somewhere uh, somewhere it's equal to k only right right or not because uh, the only yes, difference sir. that we have from the earlier sure. case is yes, in yes, earlier yes, case we had only plus here right right now we have minus so the only th problem with this circuit is that it will not work at all that is very surprising uh, for all of you uh, that is it is it will not work at all because it works on another theory which i don't want to go into the details but it's called as positive feedback so if you want to understand when is the circuit in negative or positive i can explain and if you are interested you can let me know i will explain you how to decide uh, whether a circuit is in positive feedback or a negative feedback but here i am trying to tell you that this particular circuit is in positive feedback which is basically used for oscillators so that, yes sir uh, if i uh, like something like uh, guess or like uh, that for a negative feedback if we consider that k by a not as uh, some value that we consider then uh, for a negative feedback the denominator value will be uh, like greater than the numerator so uh, like not than the numerator but uh, something like that the positive feedback will be something increasing than the negative feedback yes yes yeah. I, I will tell you chalo okay let me show you that so let us say sir, yes sir a question about uh, virtual short okay yeah. So you told uh, both uh, input uh, pins uh, have uh, same uh, voltage, I mean mm -hmm. VI and uh, the second one too. So how will VCVS act as its difference will be zero? I See, mean, as I method. told you, yeah, it's a good question that what you are saying is your VI and this VI is exactly zero. But what you are saying, what you are th considering this situation is your yeah, ideal situation. But yes. we are trying to solve it in an ideal sense. We are not solving it in a real sense. So that's why we will have a difference in the potentials at the two points. It will be there. But the value of that will be small. It will not be zero. At, okay. So okay. that is actually the ideal case where I was telling your V plus is V minus. And you try to solve your questions based on that. But uh, in reality, there will be a difference in between the two. And that will be small. Okay. Okay. Sir, there is also power supply that affects on uh, PCVS. Uh, power supply uh, do not affect the VCS too much. Like for example, you have, you know, let us say you have a voltages here VDD and zero. And what happens is because of some turbulence or, you know, some problems or fluctuations in the light, you will have some ripples on this voltage. So what will happen is these ripples will actually go straight away to the output and create trouble at the output itself. 
so normally in order to avoid this what we try to do is we try to put a capacitor along with the voltage line so that uh, capacitor will try to you know reduce these ripples and it will make it a constant dc voltage so i don't want to go into all these details but yeah the fluctuations in the voltage will straight away go to the output and it will not affect the vcvs as such okay or it might affect also by going through this path and create a small fluctuations in these uh, lines so if these lines will fluctuate definitely the voltage difference between the two will increase and definitely that will amplify by a amplifier gain a0 it can be we are not sure about it but it can go through like this also okay 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 so yeah regarding that positive feedback what happens is you know uh, let me explain one concept first before going there so if i say this is a inverting amplifier as the question was by saying inverting amplifier means when you apply a signal like this at this terminal at the minus terminal the output will actually get amplified and it will be 180 degree out of phase that's why it, we call this as inverting amplifier terminal because it inverts the signal by 180 degree out of phase and amplifies that is a con that is a property of the amplifier it doesn't you know uh, it's not a it's not had it, this has to this has to be not done by this minus thing but minus is just for inverting for 180 degree out of phase whereas if you apply at the plus terminal then what you will get at the output will be like same this. phase same phase so it's called as non inverting terminal and this is called as inverting terminal okay so let us say if i increase this voltage here vi at this terminal what can you say about this voltage will it go up or down 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 sir it will go down okay it remains it will go down or not yes sir so what can you say about this yes, potential sir. will it go up or down down because it's a same voltage connection right so it will go down what can you say about this potential will it go up or down down so if it goes down will it go more down or not this one now because this is also going down will it go more down down because it's a non inverting terminal right yes sir it will also go down because it's a non inverting terminal it's it is going down so it will go more down now so if it goes more down this will go more down and if this goes more down this will go more down and ultimately this will impact again and it will go more down again and this will keep on repeating will you agree yes sir okay. yes sir so this is a positive feedback because you are not controlling the output output is not controlled every time you know it keeps on increasing 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 and it goes down to 0 volts or in other case if let us say sir this goes let me let me finish this first if i go this if i go this down then this will go up this will go up this will go up this will go more up then this will go more up then this and then again it will increase so it can hit to plus vdd in the other case which i was discussing it it hit it at zero value so that's why you know uh, we use these th this is basically a positive feedback and we use it in oscillators that's why this will not work this particular circuit will not work though it is though it is written as k over 1 minus k by a0 and its value is k mathematically it is okay but practically it is not feasible because your output will either shoot to vdd or it can go to ground and it will not be stable okay any questions so sir it is like a damping sure. oscillator it will be a oscillator where your output will be either vdd or it will go down to zero then it will be like this. so your output will fluctuate like this can be the situation we we use this as oscillators i'm not going into the details of that but we use them as an oscillator where you know uh, we have a, a continuously generation of the signals 
from noise actually these circuits uh, oscillators take noise as the input and generates a sinusoidal signals so we call these uh, circuits as oscillators i'm not going into the details of that but uh, this is the positive feedback which actually helps in doing this and what about a negative feedback in negative feedback uh, let me show that diagram also here so in this case if you increase this voltage up this will go up if this goes up this goes up if this goes up this goes up but now it's a inverting terminal so if this goes up this will go down or not yes sir so now your output yes, is stabilized so earlier it was going up then it this terminal forced it to go down so whatever changes this terminal made to make this go up this terminal helps in making it go down and stabilize at the same value which is v out so that's why this will work and it's called as negative feedback okay sir yes sir in positive feedback uh, it uh, tends to infinity i can't understand no that. it it will not tend to infinity it will uh, stop at either vdd or it will stop at ground zero sir how sir yeah i told you right here this thing my network uh, issue is there so i can't hear that so maybe you can you can watch my lecture or uh, you know the not just lecture. network issue sir but uh, please explain it again i also didn't understand okay so here the thing is whenever you try to let us say you increase this voltage by a small amount okay so this is a inverting terminal so what will happen is this will go down because of the non inverting terminal thing so if this is goes this goes down this will also go down because of non negative uh, because of the same wires you know connected through resistor divider so this will also go down if this goes down because of the non inverting thing this will actually goes further down with a higher magnitude and when this goes further down this goes with a higher magnitude down and similarly this will also be going with that same magnitude down here and now it is again amplified by a0 this variation is again amplified by a0 and you will get more variation in the downward side so you can see your voltages are keep on increasing and it's going down towards the negative side so as you can as you know that the voltages are limited by vdd and zero so the maximum value of v0 at which it can go down is zero volts and you can take the other case also where instead of increasing vi you decrease vi so if you decrease vi you will see that v0 will go up and up and up and up and it will saturate at vdd so in either cases uh, this will not work because of the positive feedback though your equation says that v0 can be equal to kvi okay so this is basically sir, positive feedback yeah sir can we say like that way that positive feedback in positive feedback we can't control output yes you cannot control the output where it is used it is used in oscillators uh, like for example uh, it will use in uh, generate like for example in your uh, in your watches like the digital watches you will you know use batteries to you know power that uh, watch but somewhere inside uh, there will be uh, a, there will be some clockings like this so basically uh, these are acting as a clocks and these clocks are basically used in digital circuits again it's not in your course so i'm not going into the details but Uh, these digital circuits which you will study in cmos digital circuit design basically runs on clocks and clocks are sinusoidal signals like this so we generate uh, these signals uh, from oscillators which will be you know given to these digital circuits to calculate the desired outputs okay so we use them okay. extensively in electronics okay so now you understood what is positive feedback negative feedback ideal op amp situations and what are the three important things that you have to keep in mind in order to solve the circuits yes sir yes so, sir yes sir now if you have understood it in the next class we will solve some questions based on it and uh, then you will feel confident that how to solve these questions and how to you know go further and understand these concepts okay sir yes. okay sir yeah, yeah.
so about negative feedback it was about controlling the output right yes, and yes. about uh, and the positive feedback is like what i did not get that part. positive feedbacks are basically uh, you know see as the things are not controlled so the values will be oscillating you know it can go plus okay. it can go minus it can go plus again minus again so these type of situations are used in uh, i do not want to go into that but people are forcing me to you know discuss it but the things are you know suppose you have a noise like this okay these noises are actually you know of random phenomena so what happens is we have some circuits which we call them as oscillators if you want yes. you can search google on this you will get to know so what happens is these noises eh, once they move into these oscillators the beauty of oscillators is that it doesn't require any input normally uh, most of the circuits that you will find in electronics design they require inputs but oscillators are the only circuits which do not require input and uh, why it doesn't require input because it works on positive feedback even a slight variation in these inputs right so let us say you have a op amp here plus minus okay and suppose it's working in a positive feedback mode and we have this uh, you know zero here zero line this is also ground here okay so this is ground and this is uh, your zero line and your noise is like this okay this is your noise okay so will you all agree that if it is above the pink line it is greater than zero then voltage will be shoot to vdd for, yes sir for this sir. for this thing it will be above ground so it will shoot to vdd when it goes to negative side below the pink below this line will it go to zero or not yes sir then again it will go to vdd then zero vdd zero like this so what you have observed can you all please yes. mute the mic oscillator so what it is, is meaning so from is noise from noise which is of no use you created a square wave like this this is yes, a very sir. broad concept which i am trying to tell you things are more complex uh, this is very simplistic explanation of uh, oscillators so what it is happening is you are you are not using any input actually this this terminal is open only noise is coming through the environment and it generates uh, a small you know a square wave for you so all these things are used in oscillators and oscillators the basic foundation is positive feedback okay okay thank you sir. okay okay then uh, for today's class uh, yes what is vdd sir vdd means uh, supply voltage uh, just a minute so vdd okay, is okay. vcc or the battery that you are applying okay so this this is vdd which is i am telling okay okay sir okay sir okay so for now today uh, the class is over so we will discuss uh, uh, questions based on this operational amplifiers in the coming class okay thank you thank, thank you. you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir